Good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening. This is the Minister Emil Kimball coming to you live, and I do want to thank you for joining me today. Uh, those of you that have not yet done so, please like, share, and comment on this video, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have over now 12,000 plus members as subscribers, and I want to thank you all for completely continuing to support us as we bring these uh, Bible studies to you. I want to thank you guys that are supporting us when we are going into these scriptures that uh, they removed from the Bible, uh, because at the end of the day, until somebody can show me where they said uh, the Most High said, listen, this doesn't apply anymore, or that doesn't apply anymore. I want to know where was the authorization given from the Most High to remove scriptures from the Bible. That's the problem. Nobody can ever talk about that, and nobody ever wants to mention that the Most High never once said to remove scriptures from the Bible. And that's the reason that we have so many mis, uh, uh, misideas, misconstrued, mis thoughts about what the day of Yahoo is going to bring, because we think for some awful reason that these scriptures that were written don't matter. Well, here's the reality. Until someone can show me the scam or where the Most High said, I don't want you to talk about this or don't talk about that, then it will always remain a scam when somebody takes out scriptures. When Moses himself even said, if we remove anything from that book, that we would be cursed. But yet at the end of the day, somebody removed these scriptures and told you that they're not inspired and you believe that that is okay. You as a leader, you as a preacher, it's like you're standing up in front of a classroom with half of the information trying to teach a subject. How can you do such things? The Bible talks about scriptures that are removed and you don't even want to admit it or you want to skate past it like it doesn't exist. Well, we're going to sit here and go through it until the day I die. Every scripture that I was able to see and read and learn, I'm going to teach it and I'm going to preach it. And it doesn't matter if you like it or not. You do not have to watch this channel. You do not have to follow me at all. But those of you that want to be out and not be bamboozled and completely scamify with the scam, well, we need to take a look at these scriptures. So today we're going to look at the prophet Ezra. Uh, this is one of those scriptures that was removed from your Bible, but we're going to take a look at it today so that you guys can take a look and see why it's important that we talk about these scriptures. Uh, we're going to start with Ezra, 2nd Ezra chapter number 15, and I'm going to go ahead and begin reading at verse 1. He starts off by saying the coming disasters. He says, now where this, you see the word, the Lord, I've studied it out and I know what the Lord means. So I'm not going to address the most high as the Lord, because I know that the Lord means Baal. So I don't care where they scamified and put it in scripture. The most high was never meant to be called Lord. Lord is a title and it does mean Baal. So you're not going to ever hear me re, uh, respond or, uh, or, 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 you know, in any shape, form or fashion, address the most high as Lord. Or God or any of that. I don't care what the scripture, what they've translated here. So you're going to, even though you see the Lord here, you're going to hear me say Yahuwah or Yah. Yahuwah says, proclaim to my people the prophetic messages that I will give you and then have them written down. So he told the prophet Ezra to have these, these prophecies written down. Where are the writings? Who said not to read them when he specifically said to have them written down because they are true and will be fulfilled? Do not be afraid of those who plot against you or be disturbed by their unbelief. That's why you can't concern yourself, people that do not want to believe that judgment is coming on this land. Regardless of what anybody wants to tell you or try to say, there's no separation from the nations. Everybody is going to have to experience this judgment. And I don't care unless you show me where he said, oh, I'm not going to judge this one or oh, I'm not going to judge that one. Then don't you tell me that because you're part of Israel you're not going to have to experience judgment. He says, they are true and will be fulfilled. Do not be afraid of those who plot against you or disturbed by their unbelief. And all unbelievers will die because of their unbelief. This is a prophecy. This is a promise. So who in the heck said that it's not uh, legitimate? Who in the heck said it's not inspired? Yahweh says, I'm going to bring terrible disasters on the whole world, war and famine, death and destruction, because wickedness has spread everywhere and evil has reached its limit. 
Therefore, the Yahuwah says, I will no longer remain silent about the wickedness of these godless people. I will no longer tolerate it. They have murdered innocent people and the blood they have spilled cries out to me for revenge. I got news for you. That has nothing. To, that's not just talking about the people that mistreated his people. That's talking about the over 50 million aborted babies that the African-American community has to this day. Those blood, that innocent blood is calling, crying out for vengeance to the most high and you will be judged. Ain't no such thing as women's choice. When the Most High did not give you authorization, you didn't have authorization to take life because you didn't give it. He says, the souls of the righteous are constantly pleading for vengeance. Let there be no doubt, says Yahuwah. I will hear the plea of all the innocent people who have been murdered, and I will take vengeance for what has been done to them. My people are being led to the slaughter like a flock of sheep. They will no longer have to live in Egypt. I will use all my strength and power to bring them out of that land. I will bring disasters upon the Egyptians as I did earlier, and I will destroy their country. The whole land will be in mourning. It will be shaken to its foundations when I, Yahuwah, strike it and pound on it. The farmers will mourn because their seed will fail to sprout and their trees will be destroyed by blight, hail, and terrible storms. The world and the people in it are doomed. The war that will bring their destruction is very near. Nations will arm themselves and fight against other nations. There will be great political turmoil with one group trying to overpower another and gain control. Look at the political mess that we're dealing with today. While ignoring the legitimate government, there will be no longer be free access to the cities because the struggle for power will be will bring destruction, terror, and total confusion wherever people live, driven by famine and terrible suffering, and people will assault their neighbors and mercilessly plunder their possessions. Yahuwah says, I am calling together all the kings of the earth to come from the north, south, east, and west to turn back and restore what they have taken. What have they taken? I will pay them back with the same harsh treatment they have always given to my chosen people. So now he's talking about his chosen people, Israel. Who are his chosen people? Not the people that are claiming to be because he said that until the end times, that land will be uh, 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 trampled down by the Gentiles. Yahweh says, I will use my power and there will be no mercy for sinners. Sinners, sinners. So he's not talking about nations here. He says, sinners, I will put to death all who have murdered innocent people. That includes you aborted baby people that think that there's no judgment behind that. My anger has become so fierce that fire has blazed out to burn up the foundation of the earth and to burn up sinners like straw. So again, don't sit here and tell me because you're part of Israel that you are going to automatically escape judgment because if you're living a life of sin, you will be burned up like straw. That's what he says here. Sinners who do not keep my commands are doomed. So he ain't talking about no nations here. He says, sinners, says Yahuwah, I will have no mercy on them out of my sight. You rebels do not defile my holy temple. Yahuwah is aware of all those who sin against him and he will hand them over to death and destruction. So again, it's not talking about a nation and separating races. It's talking about the sinner. Terrible disasters have already come upon the world and there is no escape. You have sinned against Yahuwah and he will not rescue you. So again, I need somebody to explain to me how this is not part of scripture. Why did they take this out? So you're confused about judgment? Listen, at the end of the day, nobody will escape his judgment, no matter what you think. It says that there's going to be a sinner and there's going to be a righteous. And the only way you can be saved is if you obey his commands. Listen, I'm the minister, M.L. Kimball. You might be offended with me, but I don't care. I could care less Take it up with the most high. You will not escape judgment. I don't care what anybody tells you. And if you don't get to the place where you understand that you must obey his commands, you will be bamboozled into the scam. I'm the minister, M.L. Kimball. Until next time, be blessed on purpose.